By bombing this Yemeni port in broad daylight, this Israeli operation was meant to send a very public message. Fighter jets flying over a thousand miles to reach their targets. A power plant, as well as gas and oil depots, lighting up the night sky. Six people were reported killed and another 80 injured, mostly with severe burns. Watching the airstrikes in real time was Israel's Prime Minister. Tomorrow he flies to Washington to meet Joe Biden, who desperately needs a calmer Middle East to boost his faltering presidency. But Mr Netanyahu is still talking of war. Anyone who wants a stable Middle East should stand against Iran's axis of evil and support our struggle against its malignant offshoots in Yemen, Gaza, Lebanon, everywhere. Israel was retaliating for this unmanned drone strike on Friday on the Tel Aviv waterfront. This was the first of over 200 attacks by Yemen's Houthi fighters to penetrate Israel's defenses and kill an Israeli. The Houthis celebrated afterwards. They're backed by Iran. And conflict with Israel over Gaza strengthens their domestic grip on power. Last week, they attacked this oil tanker off the Yemeni shore, while American and British air and missile strikes have failed to deter them. Houthi missiles are usually intercepted though an American and British air campaign has failed to stop them. The armed forces restate their full right to defend Yemen from American and British aggression, as well as Israeli aggression, which won't deter us from standing against injustice towards the Palestinians. This morning, a Yemeni missile was once again shot down by the Israelis as it was heading towards the Eilat holiday resort. So last night's Israeli airstrikes could be just the beginning of another cycle of retaliation, linked to the conflict in Gaza, though still short of all-out regional war.